Hello, I'm J.R. Beal, and I'm going to talk today about the Beal wood threader. And uh, we have now uh, five different sizes of threads that are able to be made with the wood threader. Uh, actually, two different kits, one larger than the other, but five sizes are possible. And when you get the kit, I'm going to show you here what you get with it and uh, how it all works. This is the basic unit that holds these white Delrin inserts. This is made out of maple and the top is an aluminum plate that is uh, painted black. The kit contains this unit, as many inserts as you decide you want to buy, plus the various taps that you uh, uh, will need to match the inserts. You can buy the kit in just one size or two or three uh, or four different sizes for the basic unit and of course it's different prices for the different number that you want. Most people though start off with a basic three size kit and that those three sizes are generally one half, three quarter and one inch although they can be varied and these are the taps that go with them. This is a half, three quarter and one inch, three quarter and one inch tap. You also get uh, a packet of hardware to, uh, to put it all together with and a uh, solid carbide router bit which is 60 degree router bit for cutting the uh, grooves that make the threads. Over here is the large threader kit and you can see the difference between this one and the other one. Uh, this one has a very much larger hole in it and uh, it takes these larger inserts. Right here this one is the inch and a half one and uh, this is the inch and a quarter. And down here below are samples of the various thread sizes that we can make. The inch and a half, inch and a quarter uh, for, these, for the large kit and then the smaller kit uses the, uh, will make one inch, three quarter inch, five eighths and one half inch. And so those are the five sizes that, uh, that we can make with the Beal wood threader. We also have a book that uh, we did a number of years ago called the Nuts and Bolts of Woodworking. And although the basic kit has changed somewhat because it used to be made of molded plastic uh, and now it's made out of machined Delrin for the most part and wood and metal. But this kit has a number of projects in it for uh, uh, threaded devices that you can make. There you can see here's a, a toy box and nuts and bolts clocks and, uh, and these uh, funny things here that people really like, U-bolts and I-bolts. And of course clamps. Uh, there's a whole lot of different kinds of clamps in the book and uh, you can see uh, a little bit of what's in there uh, but uh, we're not going to go through that right now. Anyway it's a great book and uh, of course I'm the author so I have to say that. A lot of people are curious about just how this wood threader works. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration of that here. This is the one inch insert and um, it has a smooth part at the entrance which is a hole that is slightly over one inch and this is what takes the dowel when you start to put it into thread. So the dowel goes into this hole and back behind it is a, another hole of a slightly smaller diameter that's threaded inside. Uh, if you look in there and see if you can see it just right, there's threads down in there. And uh, that's, those threads are what guide the dowel once it starts to cut. So it goes into the unit this way and a carbide bit comes down from the top this way. And if you look in there, you can see where the point of the bit comes down. And then as you turn the dowel, it starts to cut. And as it cuts a groove, the groove goes into that first thread back behind it and it picks up the groove and then it pulls itself right through. So it doesn't really make any difference how fast you turn the dowel. Uh, it just, because it will, it will pick up the groove and pull itself right on through. Uh, of course, if you go too fast, you're liable to get some chipping. But uh, normally you turn about... Uh, mm, 
one RP or, or one uh, turn per second. You just kind of count them out, 1,001, 1,002, like that, for uh, each turn of the dowel. And that will work nicely uh, as you, uh, when you're cutting dowels to make the thread. Now to install the insert here, and this is the three-quarter insert, into the base unit, it has a flat on the top, and a flat slides right in there, like that. And if you look at the back side here, you'll find that there's a little um, raised portion, kind of a button underneath the, the plate, and there's a hole right behind the screw hole of the insert, and that just snaps over that. And that locates this insert in the right place underneath. Then you can take your Allen wrench and with a flathead screw, which I have already stuck on the end of it, and tighten that up in there so that it's nice and snug. It doesn't have to be too tight, but that's, that's just fine the way it is. Now, I'm going to put it in my vise and mount the router on top. Now, the router that I'm using for this setup is actually a laminate trimmer, which is a small variety of router. And I've already got the bit inserted, and it's the quarter inch carbide 60-degree uh, bit that comes with the kit. And in, in order to center the router on the unit, I'm going to use this index sleeve. And it fits right in the hole in the insert. And then the router bit slides down into that hole like that, and that centers everything just the way it's supposed to be in the right location so that it, the bit will come down where it's supposed to to cut the threads properly. Now the next thing we'll do is we'll take one of these uh, carriage bolts. This is a number 10 by 24 carriage bolt, and we'll move that up right next to the base of our router, and then we'll put one of these little hold-down clamps on, just like that. Then, a wing nut. And the wing nut will tighten down. You want to use the hole in the cl hold down clamp that's uh, nearest to the edge of the router base here. That'll give you the maximum amount of torque. Hold it down. I'll put, one, I'll put one on the other side here as well with another hold down clip and another wing nut. And if I don't drop this on the floor, there we go, we'll, be, we'll have it all pretty well clamped down. Now, one critical thing about this setup at this point is to make sure that these wing nuts are very tight. Because when you turn your router on, there will be a good bit of torque on the router. And sometimes, on a, particularly on a large router, it will twist it slightly and cause it to move. So what I'm going to do now is take a pair of long nose pliers and tighten those wing nuts up pretty tight on both sides. All right, now the next thing to do is to remove that index sleeve that's down in the router, or that's down into the insert and is around the router bit. If you don't do that, and people very frequently don't do that because they don't read the directions, when you turn the router on, it will heat that thing up and melt the uh, insert and just ruin your day. So I'm gonna take the router up out of its base and then pull this little index sleeve out. You have to get that out. Now I can put it back down together. And the next thing to do is to position the router so that the bit extends down into the insert the correct amount. And in order to do that, we're going to look through that hole, and I'm going to show you about where it should be. 